Hello, Taylor V. Going over problem C, kth not divisible by n in the code forces round number 640, division 4. So the problem statement is that you are given two positive integers n and k. Print the kth positive integer that is not divisible by n. For example, if n is equal to 3 and k is equal to 7, then all the numbers that are not divisible by 3 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13. The seventh number among them is 10. So the first immediate way we would want to solve this is through brute force. However, seeing how n can be up to 10 to the power 9, k can be up to 10 to the power 9, and t can be up to 10 to the power 3, we can see that our brute force method would surely time out. So now let's move on to a more clever math strategy. So we're given n and k. So in this example, n is equal to 3, k is equal to 7. Let's write out the array or the list of integers which would be possible. So this is the list that you have. Notice that every nth integer, in this case n is equal to 3, there is a gap, making it so that the integer before the gap and the integer after the gap are two apart. So what we can do is that we can essentially draw dividers on these gaps and so on. And then what we can do we can define these as sets, one set. And clearly we can see, we will see that the set size is equal to n minus 1. Because in the numbers from 1 to n, we cannot ha include the number n because we don't want any integers that are divisible by n. Therefore, it becomes n minus 1, as we can see in the example. So now what we want to do is that we know that we want the seventh integer that comes out. So if we count this out, we can see that it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the reason why we want to have these sets is because if we know how many sets we have, say that the set goes all the way up to n minus 1. And then we have an, the next set, which goes to n plus 1, and so on. Or you have a divider here. We know that in each set, all the numbers up to n minus 1 will be consecutive. Therefore, we can easily count these numbers off. And then to move on to the next set, all we need to do is add 2. And then we can get to the next set number, and then all of them will be consecutive. So this will make it very easy to count if you count the sets. So in order to get the number of sets, we can see that this would just be k over n minus 1, basically the number, the n, the kth number which you want divided by the set size, which is n minus 1. So this is how you would get the number of sets. For example, 7 divided by 3 minus 1, 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. But now we see that we come across a problem. We have a 0.5 remainder, which in this case is one half, or we have the remainder of one. So in order to counter this, we can take another integer. We can call this integer steps. And then we can see that this would be equivalent to k mod n minus one, which in this case would be seven mod two, which is equal to one. So what this steps is, is basically just the remainder after you get the number of sets is just this remainder over here. So what the steps is basically is, is that after you find the total number of sets you have, in this case, the sets which we have is three. So we would go all the way up to here and we have our number eight. So from here, we know that we have a remainder of one, which means that we have to move on to the next set and count one number of the next set. So basically, what we would do is that we would go over to the next set and count just one number, which will give us the answer of 10. Now let's move on to the code implementation of this. So we have an integer t, and we input to t, the number of test cases. Then in this for loop, we are going to input the numbers n and k over here. We're going to set an integer known as n prime. This is going to be the size of the set. And the size of the set, as discovered previously, would be n minus 1. We have our integer steps, or in this case, I just clearly wrote it out as the integer remainder, which is k mod n prime. Here is the integer sets, which is basically just the number of sets. As we discovered previously, it would just be k divided by n prime. 
So now we have this integer total. And what this basically is, is we see sets times n in the beginning. So this is obviously a multiple of n. So basically, we know that each set will go from 1 to n minus 1. Then the second set will go from n minus 1 to 2n minus 1. And this will keep going on and on and on. So what this basically is, is we calculate the number, which is divisible by n, and then we just have to subtract 1 because we don't want to count the number which is divisible by n, so we go to the n minus 1th one. For example, if n is equal to 3 and k is equal to 7, we go, the number of sets is 3, n is equal to 3, so we go 1, 2, first set, 4, 5, second set, 7, 8, third set, and because we want to have the number 8, we stop there. But in this case, we would have sets, which is 3 times 3, which is 9 which is one more than the amount which we want, so therefore we would subtract one. And then if the remainder part, so here we check the remainder, or the number of steps which we want to take in the next set. So if the remainder is greater than zero, what we want to do is that we want to add the remainder plus one, because we know that we need to make a jump of two from one set to the next set. So we add one, and then we add the remainder. This remain, this add one, helps us counter the jump of two which we need. So then we just print out the total.